Welcome to Tint Wisdom number 15. Yep, this is the 15th Tuesday. We've been streaming live at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. So thank you to everyone who uh, watches every week. And if this is your first time, welcome. So I'm going to give this a couple, give everyone a couple minutes to get in here. Um, and then we're going to jump into today's topic, which is going to be flat glass domination. Now, we spoke about residential window film last week. Um, this week, we're going to speak about four specific points that um, a fellow window film uh, company owner had mentioned to me that they would like some more clarification on. So the four points we're going to talk about today are how to reach more clients, how to land more jobs, keeping cheap clients happy, and pricing higher than competitors down the street and so on. So those are going to be the four specific topics we talk about that I am certain of will lead to flat glass domination. Um, a lot of things, you know, I mentioned, I might mention week after week. That's because as simple as they may sound and as obvious, they, obvious as they may be to implement, um, actually implementing them sometimes just doesn't happen or sometimes you think you're doing it, but you might be doing it 30% as much as you should be or you might be doing it in a different way or so on. So, you know, the important stuff, I feel like is important to repeat. So some of this you might have heard, some of it you haven't, but I can guarantee if you follow these things that we discuss on today's live stream, I can absolutely guarantee flat glass domination. And if you want to know why I can guarantee it, ask me in the comments how I know. And if you don't, then don't ask. But um, I'm going to pull up the live stream right now so I can see those comments, and then we'll go ahead and move into today's topic so hello everyone hey Mike Betsy Timmy thank you for joining <clears throat> we have nine watching I just don't know who else is but um thank you all for joining so with a crowd of nine I feel like we should get started so before we jump into these topics I do want to talk about two quotes one Facebook post four YouTube channels two Instagram pages and then we're gonna talk about these topics so First things, it's not as much as it might sound like. Hey, Jacob. All right. So, um, first quote. This is by Jeff Bezos, owner, founder, CEO of Amazon. And what he says here is, what we need to do is always lean into the future. When the world changes around you and when it changes against you, um, what used to be a tailwind is now a headwind. You have to lean into that and figure out what to do because complaining isn't a strategy. I'm sorry about the poor reading there. Um, it's very small font. But, you know, what, how I take this quote um, by Jeff is what he's speaking to is that, you know, what worked for you in the past is actually, you know, probably not going to be what works for you in the future necessarily. Like what got you here may not get you to that next step. What worked in the past may not work forever. So what he's saying is, you know, instead of kind of fighting that wind and, and letting a tailwind then turn and become a headwind, you know, he's saying fully embrace it, lean into it and make it instead of something that you worry about um, or just something that maybe affects you in a negative way, make it something you focus on, something you you know turn into a strategy. So what, it, what it's basically saying is go on the offense, don't play defense with this one, with technology. And um, you know I would say this applies in all aspects and how you run your business and marketing, but especially in the implementation of technology, um, because you know something I mentioned on every single episode is the word efficiency. And the more efficient you get, the better your business gets, the better life gets. So lean into it, take his advice. Um, that's what he means. And um, the next quote that complements that one is by I, someone I don't know. I have no idea who made this quote, but it's don't let the entire staircase overwhelm you. Just focus on that first step, one step at a time. So I feel like these quotes go well together because the first one's really saying like, hey, you know, that tailwind can become a headwind and just lean into it. And that can be a scary uh, thought, you know, once you've been doing something for a long time or it's, it's on a topic that you may not feel comfortable with. Um, leaning into it can be a scary thing, leaning into that wind. However, what this quote is saying is don't look at that entire um, storm at once. Just, you know, lean into it. Don't look at that staircase as, you know, the full amount of steps it is. 
just look at that first step and take that first step. And once you're on that first step, you can go to the second step. And once you're on that second step, you can go to the third step. And then what's going to happen is six months down the road, a year down the road, 30 days down the road, who knows, you're going to look back and you're going to go, wow, look how, look how far I've come. Look how much I've accomplished. Look how much has changed. And again, you know, it's just that incremental one step at a time, one step at a time. Things that may seem unclear now, when you take a few steps closer towards your goals and closer towards the future, those things may become clear. They may even lead to a, lead to a pivot in the business in some way. But you have to start to take those steps, okay? Don't worry about what's at the end of the trail. Just start hiking down the trail and uh, make your way and you'll adjust as you go. There'll be forks in the road, there'll be turnarounds, there'll be hills, there'll be downhills, uphills and downhills. But the important part is that you stay moving and you embrace the challenges ahead of you. Um, those who embrace them make it something that you know you um, are conscious of, that you improve upon, and that you you know they just work in your favor that way, as opposed to trying to ignore them and kind of play defense with them. So those are the two quotes. See that was quick, and now we're going to get into this Facebook post. This Facebook post is from the Window Tinting Business run by Patrick. There's also a Window Tinting Business YouTube channel. There's also a live stream that he'll do. Um, in about two hours from now on YouTube. So you definitely want to check that out. This came from his Facebook group. If you're not part of the group, join the group. My advice to you is not only to join this group, but to join all the window tinting groups on Facebook. There's a tremendous amount of value. Thank you, Harry, for joining. How are you, buddy? And Tanya, nice to see you. Thank you for watching. Absolutely, Mike. Every um, Mike said, each proposal you submit is a stepping stone for your future. It absolutely is, and how you do that proposal you know, could be whether you slip off that stone or you get splashed or whether you jump to the next one. So what I mean by that is, you know, each proposal, take it just like um, Matt from Tint Stuff said on a previous episode, uh, stream we did. He said, you know, to treat each of your audience as like your only audience. Focus on one as if that's, that's the only audience. Like instead of focusing on, you know, everybody as a whole and looking at it, just focus on each individual and try to promote, provide the most value you can for that one person. And um, what I'm trying to say here is if you treat your proposals like that, you'll find that it, you'll be very successful and you'll find that you sell more jobs and so on. So go the extra steps with your proposal, get them out quick, get them out, be thorough with them, be clear, make them professional um, and you know, do your follow-ups and treat that one proposal like it's everything. And you're going to see that you know, your closing percentage goes up and your business starts to just uh, move forward at a speed that... Um, I think you'll be impressed with. So thank you, Michael, for the uh, words of wisdom. So this post that was from the window tinting business, um, it's on my favorite topic. So Liz posted, so I have a past employee that we let go for stealing that is leaving me one-star reviews. I'm 99.9% .9 certain it's him. We had a perfect five-star review until he started. Any suggestions on how to handle this? I already have an opinion on how I think I should it should be handled, but I'd love to hear some other opinions. I was told by someone that you can report the review. Is that true? So yes, there's a few things you need to do here, and this can happen to anybody, and this probably happens to everybody at one point or another in their business. Because as a business, you know, obviously, you know how important those reviews are. Your cust your employees sometimes know how important those reviews are, and then if they're disgruntled, they may use that against you. So. Um, here is what you can do. First and foremost, you're going, before I answer that, I want to answer Daniel. Um, Daniel asked, which business guru do you follow? Uh, seems like Gary Vaynerchuk. I have been following Gary Vaynerchuk for probably about six years now, six or seven years since his first USC talk, which went viral and kind of put him on the map. Um, he is one of, he is, the best on the internet, I would say, the best as far as, you know, there's a lot of people out there that have a lot of great advice that you can get from them. Uh, Grant Cardone's another one. I don't follow him too closely, but like Tim Ferriss, great one. I feel like you can really, you know, when you listen to the people you resonate with, then you pick and choose the good information. Um, the thing I like about Gary Vee is you don't have to pick and choose. It's all good information. There's no mixture of selling. There's no mixture of sponsors, no mixture of anything. I mean, of course, he has his grand plan, but part of his grand plan is to provide the value to everybody, um, provide as much value as possible, not to monetize his audience, to provide value for his audience. And that's definitely something that 
um, resonates with me, something that we try to accomplish with these live streams, and something that really is a core uh, value with TintWiz. So one of the core values with TintWiz is really, you know, we look at it as not how much we can charge our customers and our users. Really, the, the foundation is how much can we provide for our customers and users at the absolute best price. So, um, you know, we, we have a simple pricing structure. It's $100 a month for the entire TintWiz usage for everything. That means you can add 10 employees, you can add 50 employees. Um, we built it in an efficient way to be able to manage your data uh, securely and efficiently so that we can provide you all of these features and all of this data storage and all of this usage with Google Maps integrated and so on and navigation um, and picture storage and video storage and so on. And we can do that at only $100 a month regardless of who uses it. Now certainly it's easy to say, okay, the more users um, you use, you should pay more and hey, we can get companies as they grow to pay more and so on. That goes against the, the core values of you know, what we set out to do with this. We set out not to with a, a profit agenda in mind, it was a usage agenda. We, you know, the way TintWiz was founded was it was a program that, um, that I developed internally for a window film company that I, a flat glass company that um, I ran for about four years and then sold last year. And the idea was, you know, it was great being one of the top window film companies in the country. However, um, what seemed like a much greater and um, better, you know, future at hand would be, what if we can get the things that made us successful into the hands of all tint companies to use? And getting those into tint companies' hands as efficiently as possible and as cost effectively as possible was absolutely a big part of that. Because at the end stage, you know, if you look at, okay, I can grow a big tin company or I can help owners grow their tin companies and affect the entire industry as a whole to elevate that entire industry, that to me is exciting. And so far, so good, because even just these live streams, I find so much enjoyment out of, and it's put me in touch with so many tin companies and so many, uh, you know, just so many great people. And I enjoy now chatting th with these people throughout the week um, through you know messenger and in comments and so on um, and I just I love it so uh, you know I don't know where this started but uh, oh it started with the gurus so gurus to follow would be Gary Vaynerchuk for sure um, and then you know go from there I don't really have any off the top of my head I, I really do like Tim Ferriss I think Tim Ferriss's information is just cut to a science you do have to um, you do have to chop up a little bit of what he says because it's not going to be just straight business advice. He top he touches on a lot of topics such as investing and health and so on. Um, you know, and I find other value from even just like the Joe Rogan podcast. Absolutely love it. But you know, you, some of the guests on there, there's just certain structures to their business or things they mention that you can pick up on. Aubrey Marcus is another one. You know, this is these are people who have grown their business both in unique ways and just even just kind of getting more into their headspace and how they deal with things. Can be valuable so that's the guru topic <clears throat> thank you Harry um, <laughs> so okay getting back here so this business owner Liz found herself where an employee a past employee 99% she's 99% sure that that past employee left her a bad review so what to do the first thing you should do is absolutely report it so you can report it on your Google page um, and go ahead and report it as a uh, flag it as a false review and then it gives you a couple options it doesn't really let you type a response but you can type in like conflict of interest and so on someone at Google is going to review that review and uh, or go over that you know look over that review and then make a decision whether to stay or not and then you'll get an email typically with a, a result now my experience with Google reviews especially is they don't typically get removed uh, most of the time regardless like unless it's vulgar if it has foul language or if um, it's just clearly like a personal attack or like hate like a hate speech or anything like that then it's absolutely gonna get removed but if it's just kind of one of those things where an employee is pretending to be a customer and leaves you a bad review Google's probably not going to remove it so your next step from there and I want to go through these comments before I tell you that next step but this next step is going to be your move when you're 99.9% .9 sure that it is an employee. Um, so having dealt with this, you just need good reviews to go with it. Google and all those will be no help in my experience. Well, that's pretty much true. Um, the thing you should take away from this, like anytime you get a bad review, it's usually like a blow to the face where you're like, holy moly, what just happened? How did this happen? You're in full crisis mode. How do we get this re removed and so on? So the takeaway, the silver lining from the crisis mode is 
that needs to be the first step when you, the first day that you admit to yourself, you need to focus on getting good reviews. That needs to be something you focus on, not just for a day or a week after you get a bad review, but it needs to be your focus every single day forever from now on until reviews are no longer um, necessary. So having good reviews, like if you had like 1200 positive reviews, this review wouldn't be freaking you out. Certainly you want it gone, but nobody will even see it and who cares? Um, but if you have like four reviews and now this just took you down a star, crisis mode, you know, 100%. So Jared is 100% on point. James said, yeah, on my Google company, on Google, my company was left a bad review over a situation that never happened. We reported it, emailed them and told them the situation. They reviewed it and it was gone. The process takes a while, of course, though. Well, that's great. Google definitely has that process and that is step number one. So from there, we have Jenna Cran. She said cease and desist letter and then email Google. If he continues, then hire a lawyer. Yes, it's expensive, but having bad reviews will cost you more in the end. Ding, 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 ding. This is my suggestion pretty much. So if you really do think it's an employee, then if you wanna just knock this out of the park and save yourself as much headache as possible, get a lawyer to send them a cease and desist and accuse them essentially of leaving the review, screenshot it, maybe there's other things like maybe text messages that they had sent you during the course of business or whatnot, um, you know, talking smack to you or saying anything negative or whatever it is, anything you can put together as a case against why this person may be out to get you and submit it, give it to a lawyer. It's gonna cost you anywhere from 500 to a thousand dollars. They're going to send them a certified letter telling them that they need to remove that content and they need to stop from any sort of like defamatory, um, you know, posts and whatnot. So if it is your employee, most likely they're gonna be worried. They're not gonna to wanna to pay a lawyer to respond to this. They're not gonna know what to do. They're gonna be scared and they're going to delete that review. Now. In the case that they didn't leave the review, they're probably gonna contact you and tell you, look, I didn't leave that review. I'm so sorry things didn't work out, but that wasn't me. So, you know, it is a, a kind of like a gamble there, <clears throat> but that is absolutely a way to get it done. So good advice from Jenna and um, definitely, definitely, definitely what I recommend. Um, message, then Sammy said, message them and ask what service you provided that they aren't pleased with, then send them this, you know, Yes, that could work. I'm sure Sammy's giving that advice because it's good advice because he's done it before and so on. But, you know, depending on the character of the employee, that can blow up in your face or not because sometimes it can further engage them and kind of take it to that next level. Now you're talking to them. Now they can say more things. They might want to prepare. They know you see it and it's affected you. And they might go and leave more negative reviews to get more of a rise out of you because, hey, look, it worked. So, you know, like I said, I think the lawyer um, is the best way to go. So that would be my advice. And then I'm just gonna, let's see what John said. John said, um, reply for sure, non-threatening, but um, really so readers know that the review is a crazy person. So you definitely wanna respond to that review. Um, just got a package. So you definitely wanna respond to that review and um, that way people that <clears throat> read the reviews and see the negativity that was posted might understand that it was a bad uh, previous employee. Now the way that can work against you is depending, so I thought that was from the Institute. it's not, so that's why I'm not gonna continue to open it, but I thought it was a package for something I'd ordered from the Institute's Black Friday sale. So that's why I took the package during the live stream, but then I put the package aside and I didn't open it. So. Moving on, you know, the problem with responding to the review and saying like, hey, this is, a this is a past employee and so on that's disgruntled, you're kind of opening up the customer's mind to think like, okay, so what kind of employees does this shop hire? Like, why are they disgruntled? Maybe they have other disgruntled employees. Maybe I don't want to bring my car to a place that has disgruntled employees. So, you know, while responding it like does have its allure, I feel like responding, maybe like, you know, what you could do is say, you know, hey, we, we make sure we take care of every customer. You know, if there's any issues with your installation, please reach out to us and we'll make sure you're 100% taken care of and so on. And, you know, treating it as a real customer, that way other customers see, hey, look, there might've been a problem. This company is there to resolve it. So that's the kind of company I wanna go to because in that case, you're showing them how your company resolves problems and if it's in a positive way that's going to excite them possibly about using your company versus 
you know, another company. Because at the end of the day, almost every company has a bad review here or there if you look for it. So, um, you know, that's what you got to do. Michael, the office view is, uh, I love the office view too, right? It's uh, getting dark, but it was quite the view at the beginning of the stream when the sun was still out. Um, Matt, thanks for joining. Carol, nice to see you. Uh, Tyson, Andrew, Roger, thank you all for joining. We have about 13 people in here, and um, that makes me feel like I'm not talking to myself. Uh, so I really appreciate everybody who watches. And then the other way you can make me feel like I'm not talking to myself is by leaving comments. So before I talk about what's on the screen right now, that tin podcast, I am going to um, kind of, I want to discuss... <clears throat> Okay, so I'm going to talk about the Tim Podcast first because I feel like now it's just building anticipation about this Tim Podcast. So I want to point out a new podcast that I came across that was just posted uh, maybe, what, a week ago? Uh, a couple days before, I don't know, last week or so. I noticed it yesterday. Um, it's This is on Instagram. You can search for it on The Tim Podcast on Instagram, and then there's a link um, in his profile. And it's Carlos from Texas, and he is starting a podcast. So... Check it out. I listened to it. I enjoyed it. I hope it's not the last. I hope he keeps up with it. And I absolutely love, love, love to see more people, um, you know, putting out videos out there. So on that topic, window tinting business. This is Patrick. Uh, Patrick, I mentioned earlier, window tinting group. That's where the post came from. This is his YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed, definitely subscribe. He goes live every Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern. That's in about an hour and a half from now. I watch it. You should watch it. He's super entertaining, um, and he's been doing it for a long, long time and has a um, just a vast amount of knowledge from his experience, both from automotive tinting, flat glass tinting, and then also from the technology side of it, um, being a content creator for so long in the window film industry. So definitely check him out on that topic, Tin Stuff. Tin Stuff is Matt. He is also a YouTuber. There's also a group called Tin Stuff. You definitely want to check him out as well. 53,600 other people have subscribed to his channel. So if you're not subscribed, I suggest you join the 56,000. As you can see from there, I am subscribed. And he goes live today. He actually went live. He has a really cool setup where he goes live from a GoPro. He streams while he works. And I enjoy it. So I feel like you might enjoy it. So that's why I bring it up. TinWiz. So this is our YouTube channel. So if you're already on YouTube, subscribing to the tint business, the window tint business, as well as um, tint stuff, you may as well come over and join the other 58 people uh, 57 minus my personal account that went ahead and subscribed to our YouTube channel. Um, we are starting to post different things on our YouTube channel. On our Facebook, we do the live streams, and we also have an audio experience that is going up on YouTube. Or I'm sorry, on iTunes, rather. It'll be in Google Play as well. And that audio experience is going to be kind of a different set of podcasts or a different set of content. Some of it's going to be audio from these videos, these Tint Wisdoms, and some of it's going to be audio that is just filmed on its own with no video. And what that's going to allow me to do is get more content out there and be able to um, speak on subjects that I want to speak on without the time constraint of having to actually be behind videos, um, behind a video screen. So I can record more uh, in a more flexible manner. I'll put them up on the audio experience. And then what that also allows you to do is to be able to listen to them more at your convenience. So what I mean by that is you don't have to dedicate <clears throat> time to watching me live necessarily or um, seeing, <clears throat> excuse me, or seeing me on the screen. You'll be able to just listen to me. So what that means is you can listen to me um, when you're tinting windows, you can listen to me in the car, possibly on consultations, when you're doing installations, even before you go to sleep. So you could actually fall asleep listening to this live stream without having to deal with the video or Facebook uh, it closing when you close your Facebook. So, <clears throat> so I'll let you know when the audio experience is up. It's currently being reviewed by all the platforms. So in a couple days, probably by Next Wisdom, it'll be live. Now, the thing that I wanted to mention a couple screens earlier that I kind of uh, am jumping around with is um, another opportunity that we're going to go live. So what we're going to do is Tuesdays are going to stay the same. We're going to be doing Tint Wisdoms. It's a similar, you know, always going to be the similar uh, structure, best thing we can come up with, which is, um, you know, we typically talk about some quotes, talk about some posts on the internet, and then we usually have a topic or two. 
And you know, the focus is always efficiency, growing your business, and so on. We don't really touch on the actual installations. I leave that for um, some other pros in the business. Now, what we're going to do on Thursdays, this is going to be live as well. This is also going to be on Facebook, and it's going to be at the exact same time as Tuesdays. But it's going to be a completely different format. So on Tuesdays, we talk about tint. On Thursdays, we're going to talk to tinters. Not just tinters, but tint manufacturers, uh, tint installers, tint sales reps, tint everybody. Um, everybody and anybody. Uh, tint influencers, tint uh, social media companies that manage tint companies, web developers for tint companies. The idea being that this is going to, going to be an interview uh, style, uh, interview style live stream where we are going to, I'm going to, uh, well, we, we are going to be able to you know, get the ear of people from the industry and be able to find out their unique perspective. So you know, if it's a manufacturer, they're gonna be able to answer questions that only a manufacturer can answer. If it's installers, they're gonna be able to um, answer those unique questions and so on, consultants and so on. So the idea is you know, as much fun as it is uh, spewing out my knowledge and you know, trying to get as much knowledge from you guys in the comments as possible, I think it'll also be fun to be able to get that knowledge on a one-on-one -on -one live stream where I'm able to answer qu or ask questions and then you're actually able to ask questions in the comments live as well and they'll have to answer those questions. So we're going to do the first one this Thursday. That's the day after tomorrow. It's gonna be in the same place again, same place, Facebook Live, same time, Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, I'm really looking forward to it because it's going to be a lot of fun to talk to somebody else and not just talk to myself as much fun as that has become. I also have this kind of alter, like, so I have many reasons I want to do this. You know, I just mentioned some of them, but like one other reason I want to do this is because I like the idea of, you know, being on camera was not something that, you know, just comes natural to me. Um, tint wisdom is uh, one of my first uh, times on camera, I would say. Um, it's definitely my most consistent and so on. And it's where I've become the most comfortable being on camera. So what I'd like to do is offer that same opportunity and um, kind of boost to other people that may want to be on camera. They may want to be on camera for their own business, um, in front of their customers or so on, or for other reasons. Who knows if they want to do a podcast or so on. And maybe being camera shy, um, you know, is what's holding them back. And I feel like these interviews are a good way to maybe get some people who wouldn't necessarily be comfortable being on camera on their own to jump on, be on camera uh, with us as a group and get comfortable with it. So I think that's going to be a lot of fun. I really look forward to it. And if um, there's anybody that specifically you'd like to see interviewed, we have the next three Thursdays booked up already. But after that, right now the schedule is open. If there's anybody that you would like to see interviewed, tag them. Uh, make a little note while you're tagging them, like why you're tagging them, like this would be a great interview or something like that. And then I'll reach out. Hopefully they say yes and you'll see them on the interview every Thursday, same place, this Facebook live stream. So excited about that. And uh, we're going to move on to the next screen, which is the Institute. I mentioned them earlier. I think Austin Cook is one of the greats in the window film and rap industry. Um, I was expecting some merch that I purchased from his Black Friday sale. So that's the package that I had by me earlier, this package that turned out not to be his stuff, but I have to check the tracking. It's only been like a day, so it probably is not going to be here yet, but um, hopefully later today or tomorrow, and I'll show you that when I get it. So that's the Institute. This is their uh, Instagram. So they are on YouTube. They don't post all their content on YouTube, so it might be something you want to subscribe to, but the number one place to check out the Institute is their Instagram. That's where, they po where Austin posts the most videos. And listen, what I take from these videos is not just the content he says, but beyond just the content he says, it's like, look around his shop. Like one of his most recent videos, if you just look back, look at, look at, um, in the picture on the bottom right, and you can see like his vinyl setup. Doesn't that look like something you might want in your shop? And then I can't scroll down here cause this is a screenshot, but if you look down maybe another row of posts on his Instagram, you're going to see like him talking with a price board behind him. And like that price board is legit. So like, you know, you're gonna pick up, you can pick up value um, from people like Austin and from his Instagram channel, regardless of, you know, whether it be the things he says or the things you notice or the way he does things. So, you know, definitely one of the greats. And then moving on to another great is Mike Powell. So um, Mike Powell is a great friend. He's a great, someone I consider a great in the window film industry. And he puts out videos, um, you know, 
usually two, three times a day, depending on the day. Um, you know, hopefully more and more and more because I don't think there's such thing as too many videos. So check him out, Mike Powell, uh, that's his Instagram. Um, but you're going to probably see most of his content in Facebook groups. Hopefully start sharing it on his actual Instagram and so on. Or some of it he does actually, maybe all of it he puts on his Instagram. Mike, I don't know what I'm talking about. But I see the posts that he makes um, in the groups really spark a lot of conversation. So, you know, it's always interesting to see what he posts. And, um, you know, Mike Powell, definitely a great. So moving on from there is flat glass domination. That is a topic for today. And the four points, as I said at the beginning of this live stream, that we want to kind of just focus on, because last week was residential as a whole. The difference between residential as a whole and flat glass domination is focusing on these four points, which is reaching more clients, landing more jobs, keep cheap clients happy, and pricing higher than the competitor. You know, this isn't everything you're going to need to, um, you know, run a tin company, but it is everything that, it, that you'll need to dominate in the flat glass category, I'll tell you that, because you know what I'm assuming is, I'm already assuming that you know how to actually tint the windows, and if you don't, hopefully you'll get a good good trainer for it. You do some online training. I also, Stan Foster is a trainer, I hear an excellent trainer, so he, I just saw him jumping in here. You can contact him for training if you don't know. Um, if you're looking for training, there's a lot of training out there, so I'm not touching on the training. I'm assuming you know how to tint windows, and I'm focusing on these four topics who actually came from Mike Powell as uh, topics that he thought he could benefit from and everyone could benefit from. So here we are, reaching more clients. Reaching more clients is first, and I didn't put these in any specific order, but in my opinion, reaching more clients, if your business is working right now, okay, your wheel is spinning as your business. And you know, at the end of the week, you have profit. At the end of the month, you have profit. And at the end of the year, you have profit. And you're saying, well, how can I just spin that wheel a little faster? How can I do a little better? The thing you need is to reach more clients because, you know, if, if your, um, if your bottleneck is more business, so you're, you're we're ignoring your employees for the second, you have employees, you can handle more business, you have room for the growth, you know where to get the film, that's not a problem. You're just sitting there going, I want to do more. You need to reach more clients. So how to reach more clients? <clears throat> how to reach more clients? Now, there's gonna be a lot of ways to reach clients. I'm gonna talk about the ways that I suggest you reach clients. These are the ways that are attractive to me. These are the ways that I feel are scalable and so on. Okay, so what I'm not gonna tell you is the best ways to print out flyers and go put them on cars at the supermarket. That is certainly a way to reach clients. It is a immediate way to reach clients. It is a, um, it is a way, but I don't really wanna talk about those ways because I feel like those ways have been around um, for decades and those ways have become less and less effective. Those are great ways to annoy people personally. When I get a flyer in my car, I'm super freaking annoyed, especially if they put it on my wiper and I didn't notice until after I got in the car and then especially if I started driving. So think about those things before you go around littering people's cars or you know throwing them in front of their houses or whatnot. Is It's not always, um, it's not always the impression you wanna give. So reaching more clients. <clears throat> Most of y'all are already posting on your business page, okay? So you're reaching out to your clients. And, and you know, I see a lot of the tactics over the last couple of weeks are offering discounts and so on, okay? And the problem I have with that is when you're just reaching to your, um, when you're just posting, whether you're posting pictures of your work or whether you're posting discounts or so on, you are talking to a group of fish. You're talking to your clients. Imagine a little like a little puddle of water and you have your friends in there, your family's in there, some customers are there, some past customers, and maybe a couple people who thinks your business interesting and maybe some fellow tinters. That's who's in the pond, okay? So every time you are going over to the pond and you're throwing a little line in there to catch one, okay? Your bait is information about your tin company. Check out what I did, check out this discount, this is why you need tint, and so on, okay? And the problem is, you're talking to your past customers, you're talking to your family and friends, and you're talking to a couple, maybe, you know, uh, stragglers, you can offer them the world. I mean, you know, what is your potential there? What's best case scenario? It's not that big. So what you need to do is not just make those posts. What's more important than how frequently you post and more, even more important than what's in the post is how many people see the post. So I want to give you an example. Think about the worst post ever. Just, let's just say it's just your logo. It's your logo with a white, just your logo, okay? Now, what's more important? Is it more important that I say, we say, okay, let's not just post your logo, that sucks. Let's post a 
super, you know, edited, you know, just the coolest video of you tinting a car. That'll get people's attention, right? Now, if you put that logo in front of your family and friends and so on, or you put that, put that super cool video, how much of an impact is it really going to have on getting more customers to you versus you take your logo and you get a million people to see it? So what would you rather? A better piece of content at your existing audience or doesn't matter what the content is, but a million people are going to see it or 10 million people are going to see it or everybody in your city is going to see it or everybody in 20 miles or 10 miles radius of your business is going to see it. What would you rather? Well, I'll tell you what's most effective is going to be getting like going the broad route. Okay. And of course I'm trying to paint two extremes for you. I'm trying to get to get you to see that just simply the repetition of posting to your existing audience is not a solution. It's, it's, you're, you're like walking in place. The same people are seeing it. There is no organic growth on Facebook right now. Like there's no organic reach on Instagram. So you're just seeing the same people. You're getting the same likes. Nothing's going to happen. You can offer to 25% less. That's probably not going to do too much. You're just going to be doing the work for cheaper. So what I suggest to you, instead of offering a tint job for 25% less, and let me run the numbers for you. If that's a 200%, $200 tint job, and you offer that $200 tint job at 25% less, you are cutting $50 off of that tint job. So your $200 just became $150, okay? Now, let me tell you something you could have done better than that. If you made that same post, but you posted a picture of you tinting or tint on a car or a nice truck or whatever that's been tinted in front of your company, maybe with your sign in the background or whatnot, okay? And you take that $50, and you apply that $50 to your Facebook ads and you boost that post to people who like that kind of truck within a 10 mile radius of your business. You are going to get way more. You're going to get I, tens, hundreds, who knows how many customers and how much awareness you're going to get for that $50. Literally, you're going to be able to get probably 50,000 or so, maybe more, maybe a couple less, depending on your area, people to see your post. 50,000. For that $50 that you spend in ads, okay, instead of cutting the $50 from your tint job, okay, and getting one tint job at $150 and nobody even wants it because nobody's seeing your post. Do you understand what I'm saying? You have to spend your money on getting more reach, getting people to know about your business and not on discounting your services. Because if you add $20 to your services and you feel like, wow, maybe I'm not going to sell as much of it, but you take that $20, you just, instead you just take $20 and you use it to promote your business on Facebook, you're going to see that you're better off. You're going to get way more customers. You're going to do way more volume. You're going to have way more profit by spending money towards getting more reach than fishing in the little pond that you call your audience currently. So, you know, like one of the popular things that's been going on right now is um, inviting everybody to like your Facebook page. So that's definitely a cool way, a little Facebook hack to get some organic reach, to get some free reach. And what that's going to do is that's going to get all the people that you're friends with, which are probably people in your area to share it with all the people they're friends with. And of course that could exponentially, I mean, that could be enormous. So definitely a good hack. Um, you know, I didn't mean to kind of get into saying it like as if I, I didn't agree with it. It's definitely a good hack. Um, it's definitely something you should try, but at the end of the day, that is not the end all. Just asking for people to share and so on when you can actually control. This is how Facebook works is, you know, you're there as an audience and they're relying on, you know, companies to pay money to get in front of you and that generates money for them. So, you know, they are not going to give you that reach as a business unless you pay money. That's just the way it works. It's not them screwing you. It's a blessing that you have that opportunity to use a platform. So. You know, I'll, I'll jump to the next one, but what I'd like to say is I use $50 as an example, okay? Because I'm trying to show you that instead of discounting your product $50 and then every tint job you get from your discount, from your promotion is gonna cost you $50 less. If you take that $50, keep your normal pricing and spend $150, you could get 10 jobs at full price from that $150 versus getting one tint job at a discounted $50. Does that make sense? You wanna use your money for you not just cut cut it away from you, okay? So um, I'm gonna jump into the comments. 
Mike said, I feel showing customers that you're not pocketing their money and just showing you put back into your shop to do better work environment um, is, you know, shows the customers, you know, showing you're expanding and growing. I did a two day boost on a walk around video of a finished video and gained over 600 followers within 25 mile range. That post I did on a small business asking friends to just go to my page and invite their friends was 200 new followers. So you see how they both work. They work differently. Hopefully, you know, ultimately the number we want to talk about is, well, what did they turn into customers for you? Um, but that is the right step. You're talking about five or $10 a day. I use 50 as an example. My recommendation is five, you post every day. Every day you spend $5 on that one post. You boost it for five days, $1 a day. So every post is gonna cost you $5. It runs for five days at $1 a day. That means if you post 30 days a month, which is you know about every day, you're gonna spend $150. One tint job is gonna pay for itself. I'll bet you that if you just do this, just try this, you're gonna get back five to $10,000 worth of sales from uh, this strategy. And you're gonna find that every month you do it, the amount of customers that you start to get back, you're gonna to start to see compounding. Even so you're only spending that $150, you're gonna see more and more companies because, or more and more customers because some people will come to you right away, others will need that repetition and need to see your um, post more than one time. And then as far as the audience goes, to touch on that real quick, you're gonna to wanna to boost to, um, you're always gonna to wanna to limit to your geographic area. So for, no matter who you're boosting to, you wanna say within 20 miles or within 10 miles. I don't, care, I don't care if it's a new audience or your family and friends or whatever it is, people who like your page, you always wanna limit it to that you know, 10 miles, 20 miles, 30 miles around your business, depending on the service. If it's automotive, you wanna be a little closer. If it's flat glass and you're traveling to them, you can broaden it based on how far you wanna travel, and then also based on density of the area. Some areas five miles super far, some areas five miles nothing. So always wanna pick your geographic area. The, the go-to number is maybe 10 miles around your business. 10 to 20 miles, you can't go wrong. And then <clears throat> the ways you wanna boost your posts. So you wanna boost to people who like your page and their friends. That's gonna have a similar effect to that little hack. Um, that's going to get people who already like your page and their friends to see your post. Also, when their friends see it, they can see that if Facebook notes them that their friend likes your page, so they're more likely to take note because you're kind of getting that credibility. The next one is, you cut, and, and that's gonna be to get that repetition. And then the next thing is you're gonna want to post to kind of like a what, what I would consider being like uh, your reach. Just, just the people in your area. So if it's a post about an F-150 tinted, maybe you target people within 20 miles that like F-150s, men and women. Maybe you do it just for men because there's more men with F-150s and you see what works for you, okay? And that's gonna get a new audience outside of your circle aware of your business. And then when they like your post, you can click and invite them to like your page. Then they like your page and then because you're targeting people who like your page and their friends now you're targeting them so they're going to see you again for sure and then their friends are now going to see you so you can see that just by doing that little process of getting new people in there and then targeting them over and over you're going to get that repetition if you don't target people who like your page then the people who like your page see you once they like your page they probably won't see your post again that like is cool because it shows that more people like your page but you're not getting the audience on it so take your focus a little away from how many people like your page and try to make your focus more about how many people are actually seeing your posts and then interacting with your posts in the forms of likes, shares, and of course, the most important uh, leads because leads are what it's about. That's how you know you're doing it right. So that's that. Um, if you have any questions on that, please feel free to interrupt. I'm gonna go ahead and read these comments. Jacob said, most customers do not know what they need. Your job is to teach the customer. I bid on jobs constantly that want a door or window. I walk out with half the house with ceramic film because I teach the customer, not sell the customer. Thousand percent, thousand percent. You want to be the expert. You want to take control, let the customer know, I'm going to identify what's the best solution to what you're looking for. So a customer comes in there and says, hey, I'm, you know, I don't want people to see me from the street. 
Cool. Well, this is the film that's going to give you privacy, but you know what can give you heat rejection? Hey, what about that skylight? Hey, what about those window blinds, those dusty window blinds in your bathroom? Do you want to frost those? Because you can get rid of those blinds and you can have privacy 24-7. You get the natural light. Right now, you're not getting any natural light in with those dusty blinds. And when that clicks in their head, and I mean, you could even be like, hey, can I use your restroom? And then when you go in there, like, hey, I noticed your dusty blinds. Do you want to get rid of those dusty blinds? Because when that clicks in their head and they see that, wow, Wow, you just suggested something that made sense to them that they didn't think about previously. They automatically start going, okay, what else does this person know that I don't know? What else? This person's looking out for me. They have great ideas. I need to listen to them. I need to get in the passenger seat and do what they say. So the next, when you tell them, hey, what about that skylight? I bet that thing lets in a lot of heat. Why don't we do some exterior film on there and block some glare? Maybe a light interior film instead. If it's, uh, you know, depending if it's laminated or what type of glass. When you start to make those suggestions to them, you're taking it from, I wanted privacy on my front door to I'm getting half my house done or I'm getting my whole house done or the neighbors or my mom needs tint or my, you know, my brother and so on. So Jacob, excellent job. Excellent job. Because when you're trying to sell the products, now you're trying to justify why your film is worth more than the, the other guy's film, why your film's the best film and so on. And at that point, you know, um, that's a losing game. That's a losing game. Certainly you want to know what's good about your film and what the strengths are of your film and so on. And you want to, of course, give the best film options to your customers, but you don't want it to be about the film because if it's about the film and the price, then you're on a playing field. You're not selling yourself. You're not selling them the service, the things they need. And really you're not doing them justice because at the end of the day, you're the expert. Think about it as a mechanic. If you pull in and you say, hey, my brakes are squeaky. I need you to take a look at it. And the mechanic notices that you have no coolant in your car and you might blow your engine at any moment and overheat. Do you want them to tell you or vice versa? You go in for coolant. They notice your brakes are about to fall apart. Do you want them to tell you? Do you want them to take the lead, tell you, hey, I know you need this, but you know what else you need is this, this, and this, and this is going to improve the efficiency of your car. And this is actually going to save you money down the road, save you from a costlier repair. Hey, I see that floor over there, that wood floor looks expensive, looks new. Do you want to protect it from fading? Why don't you move the rug and see if it's already faded a bit? You move their rug and you see that their wood floors have faded a bit. You're in a position to show them how you're about to save them from replacing or refinishing their floors with some window film. So, you know, notice the art, notice the floors, notice their dusty blinds and take control of the situation. Notice what they're looking for and notice what their house needs and go from there. And I guarantee that's domination. So Jacob, good job dominating. And thank you for telling everybody, um, for sharing that with everyone, Michael, Daniel, and so on. Um, you definitely want to sell yourself. You know, you want to sell the film. You have to show them what's better about your film, why they want to use your film and why they want to avoid certain things and so on. Because if, if you only sell yourself, then, you know, the next guy can come in with automotive film and the customer says, well, I like this guy too. What's the difference? They're both really polite. They're both really nice. They have nice presentations and so on. This is half the price. Boom. So you definitely don't want to ignore selling the film, but you want to ultimately, um, I feel like people are going to make their decision based on who they trust. And that's going to be by selling yourself. So, uh, Jacob said, when you buy a new car, you say, I don't need the options. Then they say, check this truck out and we will go look at a base model after. Always show the best first. You know, this reminds me of, I bought a Grand Cherokee quite a few years back, a Jeep Grand Cherokee. And at the time, this was my first SUV, my first Grand Cherokee. I was uh, stepping it up from an old Corvette that was giving me tons of mechanical problems. So I went in there and I said, you know, look, I just want something cheap, reliable with some space. I don't want to spend a lot of money. And I said, uh, let me get a Jeep Liberty at the time. I don't know. They still have Liberties, I think. But I said, let me get a Liberty. That's what I want. And the sales guy said, you don't want a Liberty. I said, no, I definitely want a Liberty. And he said, you want a Grand Cherokee. There wasn't a regular Cherokee at the time. So I think that's why he skipped up. He said, trust me, you don't want a Liberty. You want a Grand Cherokee. I looked at the Grand Cherokee. I was sold. I don't need to look at the Liberty. I love the Grand Cherokee. Yes, it was a little more than I wanted to spend. However, when I saw that there was this better option, like I was super grateful. Since then, I actually have replaced that Grand Cherokee with another Grand Cherokee um, because I liked it so much and they're uh, great vehicles at that price point. So what I'm saying is, you know, that sales rep saved me from driving away in a Liberty, which I may have regretted a day, a week, a month, a year later. Um, you know, if I would have found out about a Grand Cherokee right after, you know how I would have felt like, oh, what a mistake I made. 
And um, you know, this is only a car. People can swap cars whenever, but you're making a decision for their home or their car. But you know, we're talking about flat class here, so for their home. So it's super important that you educate them, you show them what's best for them, and um, you know, sell yourself and the film. What's up, Daniel? Thank you for joining. And uh, Jacob, thank you for leaving the comments. I love comments because, again, comments make me, uh, first of all, I love the comments because at the end of the day, I don't know everything. And this is the idea behind going live is that we can get everybody's input on these questions and we can work together as a group to provide the uh, total answers, the best answers, and, you know, and so on. So that's the idea. So the comments are definitely part of it. And um, I appreciate the comments. So thank you guys, because it also helps me feel like I'm not just talking to myself. So the next thing on this list is land more jobs. Um, land more jobs. I don't know if this one's more or less. Uh, this one's, I still say reach more clients is more important because reaching more clients, if you're, like I said before, if your business is operating successfully now, you just need to turn that wheel faster First thing to focus on would be reaching more clients, in my opinion, because you can just turn that wheel faster right there. That's going to generate more money. That money means more profit. That profit means more money to invest in infrastructure for your business, um, as well as marketing and so on to, you know, reach more clients. Number one, don't forget that reach. Number two, and I didn't mean to put this in an order, but man, I think it's in the proper order, is land more jobs. So what that means is now that you're reaching more customers, you're giving more quotes, how do you land more of those quotes? And, you know, the details, the details, the details, the details. There's not magic to it. Like, again, I assume right now you're already selling some jobs. So you know how to sell a job. What I'm not going to tell you, you know, hey, you, you need to, we're not going to flip it on its head however you're doing it. Um, hey, what's up, Vinny? Hello from New Jersey. So, we're not gonna flip your strategy on its head. We're gonna improve it, okay? And the way you can do that is the details. And that is going to inadvertently flip it on its head because it's gonna make it so much better, you're gonna be blown away. So this is one of those, you need to look at a magnifying glass at your entire process and using that magnifying glass, you're gonna be able to see those details, those wrinkles in your fabric that need to be straightened out. And when you zoom out, you're gonna see an ironed finished product. So I wanna talk about some of those wrinkles. First things first, your first communication with your new leads. Lead comes in, they call, they submit it on a TintWiz form on your website, so you get it in TintWiz. Maybe you're not using a TintWiz lead form and uh, you're doing it the old fashioned way, you're getting an email, whatever it is, your first communication with your customer. That is the first place I want you to put that magnifying glass, okay? How fast are you getting in touch with your customer? I'm talking about, you're picking up the phone. Well, how many rings did it take you to pick up the phone? You're, you know, picking up in one ring. How do you sound when you pick up on that ring, one ring? You sound great on that one ring when you pick up the phone. What are you saying to sound great? And like, you need to take it to a magnifying glass and we're gonna go basically, I'll try and run down. I don't wanna keep you guys past hour, hour and a half, two hours, but, um, so I'll try to run through these, but and give you kind of more the concept of how to apply this to your business. And then you take the magnifying glass in your own hands and start looking at, at the wrinkles. So again, shine that magna. First place to put that magnifying glass is how fast are, is your first communication? How fast are you getting in touch with your customers? Whether you're responding to their email, whether you're responding to their text or their call, how do you sound and what are you saying? Okay. So if you don't sound, if you, if you're not picking up on the first ring, work on it. If it's the fifth ring, work on it. If you're answering voicemail, huge problem, huge problem. You have to be answering before a hang up. Okay. So huge problem. We're going to, if you have, if you're not able to figure out how to answer the phone before a voicemail, leave a comment and we'll figure that out for you, but, or we'll figure it out together. But you have to pick up the phone on the first ring. You have to answer emails within five, 10 minutes. You have to respond to Yelp inquiries within 10, 20 minutes. These are musts. So if you're not able to get there, that's the perfect challenge. Well, we won't move on to the second. You should move on to the second. Take these, take that as a step on the staircase and focus on how you can um, improve that one tiny aspect. You might just go from, I usually answer voicemails at the end of the day to I'm picking up on the third ring. That alone is a huge step up that staircase and you're gonna see a big difference in every aspect 
um, in handling your client from that point forward. So point of contact with the customer, then you're going to look at how are you pricing, look at your pricing, compare it, you know, compare it around you, compare it to your profit margins, com you know, break down how much your money you're making, make sure you have a good, better, best scenario. Um, you know, uh, if, if you don't know the profit margins of your good, better, best, figure that out. Make sure you're leading your clients to what's best for them, but make sure also that you have a profit margin built into that solution because sometimes you might find out as a tin company that when you're upselling your customers, you may be making less than um, you're making profit on a lower grade film or on a lower priced film. And you know, some things that factor in there might even just be the difficulty of the film or waste or how long it takes you and so on. So figure out your profit margins, figure up that upsell technique because, um, you know, I kind of jumped into automotive there. That's where my mind went with that. Um, probably because we're using auto as a strategy. So when we talk about flat glass and pricing, you know, it's more along the lines of make sure you're going on a consultation for every single quote, consultation, consultation, consultation. There'll be one in a hundred that you quote over the phone, send them a proposal. Doesn't matter if you gave them a price over the phone. Doesn't matter if they weren't interested, send them a online uh, text and online proposal using TintWiz or using whatever you need to use, but get them a quote because that quote is going to be something tangible that they have that they can refer back to. It also gives you the opportunity to follow up. It also shows them what you're quoting them on and it's just a whole nother line of communication that you're starting. There, you just hang up the phone on them, you just ended it. You keep a line of communication with that quote. You're being professional, you can follow up that's going to turn into more customers going out to every every residential every commercial bid that gives them an opportunity gives you an opportunity to sell yourself it is you know you're selling you're only you're very limited to what you can sell of yourself if you're only on the phone that is an opportunity to sell yourself it is a first impression but you have to go out there. You have to go out there and sell yourself in person. You have to give them a quote on the spot. If you're going out on a consultation, you're not quoting them on the spot. You're missing the opportunity to sell and schedule the job right then and there. That is a huge thing I see with tint companies that um, are starting to adopt TintWiz is they're realizing that as they integrate TintWiz into, um, hang on one second. All right, we have a background. So, what I'm seeing with um, what I'm seeing with a you know, I see it every single day with ten companies that uh, we do demos for or that reach out to us during the integration process is that you know they're switching from. Uh, giving a proposal out a day or two or three days later, even that same day in the evening to doing online proposals and or, uh, sending them proposals while they're at the consultation through email and text. And they're closing jobs on the site, on site that's elevating their closing percentage and eliminating steps of the customer having to reach back with you. That's an additional phone call, then scheduling, then you having to do that and so on. So doing, you want to go out to every single job, which may sound to do a quote, but then you want to get that quote out then and there and schedule everybody right then and there before you leave. So the next time you're out there, it's you or your installers actually installing the film and doing the job. So that is how you can land more jobs. Get the quote or like uh, focus on every aspect, every touch you have with your customer from when you first speak to them uh, to when you're out there in person. And then when you're out there in person, make sure that you absolutely sell that job on site to sell that job on site. You have to give them a price before you leave. So you want to have an efficient way of quoting the customer before you leave and closing the customer and scheduling the customer. Certainly you're going to have some here and there that aren't going to want to schedule with you on site. But when you give them that opportunity, more than not are going to schedule with you. If you don't find that happening, then you have another problem and we can evaluate that. So that's that. Jumping back into the comments, Jacob said, landed three big auto jobs Saturday after 5 p.m., one being 10 p.m. We were the only ones who answered. Other shops answered Monday, so we were able to sell on a higher quality film. That's a huge, 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 uh, you know, best rat, best practice in the industry. Jacob, thank you for sharing that. So, you know, your business hours can be the hours that you actually tint windows, or you can have office hours that are later on. You can have, like, you can, your hours, the times you answer the phones can be anything you want. And if you're using technology right, you're able to answer your phones from anywhere you're at. So your cell phone rings. If you're with your kid and you do not want to answer that phone, don't answer the phone. It's 
fine. That's your choice. But if it's Saturday night at 9 p.m. and you're sitting there and your phone rings, don't laugh at it. Pick up the phone. Put on a, a cheery voice and pick up the phone. And what you're probably going to hear on the other end is, oh, I wasn't expecting anyone to pick up. You're the only one who picked up. And you're going to go, yeah, of course. We pick up all the time. We, we, we work 24 hours a day. We work, you know, we want to take care of our customers. If we have somebody calling with a question, I'm here to answer. How can I help you? And they're going to say, well, I want to blah, blah, blah. And before you know it, you're going to have to sold your job. Okay? So pick up the phone. Pick up the phone. Always pick up the phone. There was somebody, and I'm not, I don't have a screenshot, and I don't remember their name, and I don't mean to call them out. But they said something along the lines of like, every year I've worked on Thanksgiving or something like that. This year, if anybody calls me on Thanksgiving, like I'm not going to be so nice to them. And it's like, there's no reason. Just don't pick up the phone. You know, like don't take offense that your customers want your service. Like I call places like all the time. Like I want to know if they're open. Like Thanksgiving, I want to know if a restaurant's open. I don't want to offend them if they're not open. I just want to know if they're open because if they're open, I want to use their business. So like don't build up those weird like uh, aggressions towards your customers, okay? Just pick up whenever possible. Vinny said, I speak to people on Facebook at 2 a.m. Look, if a Yelp or a Facebook person's reaching out to you at 2 a.m., isn't it nice if they get a response at 2 a.m.? Maybe they're going to be asleep all morning, and when you reach back out to them at 9 a.m., you're going to get a voicemail. Then you're never going to get in touch with them. Isn't it easier to talk to them when they're available the first time? Get that job sold, get it scheduled, and move on? Like, that makes it fun. The other way makes it work. So, Vinny, uh, you know, definitely... I commend you for doing that because that is 1,000 percent the correct way of doing it. So, David, what's up for joining? That's David Kratz. Thanks for watching and joining us. Um, so we're talking about flat glass domination. We've already hit reaching more clients. We've hit landing more jobs. Uh, the next one is keeping cheap clients happy, and then pricing, and then the one after that's pricing higher than a competitor. Uh, those two, I didn't put, you know, I didn't put any of these in a particular order. The first two, I feel like we're in the right order. Um, I think pricing higher than a competitor is actually more important than keeping cheap clients happy. I, I know that actually. So, uh, we're just going to skip around and I'm going to go to the third most important thing from this list, which is going to be pricing higher than your competitor. And what I mean by that is, you know, you want to offer the best products. You want to offer the best service. And with that, there's almost an expectation of a higher price, okay? So you, you know, like you have to think about it from your perspective, okay? When you see something you're interested in, let's just say you're getting like a, let's say you were ordering a, a tool and you see there's three versions of this tool. There's the one that's a dollar, there's the one that's $5, and the one that's $10, okay? You might say, look, the $1 one's fine with me, okay? But you might be interested in, well, what's better about the $5 one? Is it more precise? Is it going to last longer? What's with the $10 one? Okay? So, like, you already know. Like, you're in your mind, you're going, the $10 one's the best one. The $5 one. Now, I never said, like, like in my uh, example, like, I don't know. I was making up an example. So, like, the $10 one could be the worst one. The dollar one could be, like, solid as, you know, solid as all could be. And the, the $10 one could be an over-engineered piece of garbage. But what I'm saying is... You already expect the best to cost the most. Nobody goes into a car dealer and you're like, I want the fully loaded one because it's cheaper than the uh, base model. Oh, really? It's not? You expect it to be the most. So like you, you know, you, if you're going to be the best tin company, you can't be afraid or uncertain of how to charge the most. Because if you are, then you're going to start to charge the least. Because when you're not able to charge the most, you end up somewhere in the middle or typically what happens is you work your way down until you're somewhere at the bottom. Okay? So, you know, what happens is you might start up here and, and think like, okay, I can charge up here. And then as customers beat you down, you start getting, I don't want to hassle. I don't want to negotiate. I don't want to fight. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to. And you start thinking, well, customers are cheap. I need to lower my prices. And before you know it, you're down here. And then at that point, you don't have the margin that you need to run your business. You don't have the margin to pay your employees and expand. You don't have marketing margin. You don't have margin for a new website. You don't have margin for a shop renovation. You don't have margin for a van wrap or a van or blah, blah, blah. So you have to be able to command higher prices for your services so that you're able 
to have the markup you need to run an efficient and effective business and to pay yourself and to afford the premium products. If you can't, if you're selling film, if you're selling flat glass reflective at 450 a square foot, you can't afford to pay a premium for a quality film at a dollar a square foot or a dollar fifty. Like you, you might be able to barely afford it. But what I'm saying is you're gonna go, okay, well, I can only get 450 from the client. So now I need to see how cheap I can get the film. And before you know it, now you're offering a cheap film to cheap clients and like that's a losing game. So, you know, you have to be confident in your pricing. You have to button up your entire process so that your your customer can see and under and hear and understand why your service at the end of the day, when if they get three quotes, why your quote was a little more than some of the other ones. And you know, they're not gonna think twice. Hey, another you're gonna hear things like this. Hey, the other company came in a lot cheaper, but I really like you guys and I feel like you know the film that you offered is what I need for my home. That's what you're gonna hear from customers. Not everyone's gonna just tell you why they're picking you, or they're gonna tell you, hey, you know, the the film you're you know, I really like you guys. I want to go with your company, but it costs a lot more than the other company. Is there anything we can do on the price? And then that's your opportunity to say yes. We can definitely do something on the price. I can show you other options that cost less. And then I, what did they show you? Oh, well, they showed me this film. Okay, cool. Well, we can actually do that film if you'd like, but here is why I don't recommend that film. Because of your view, because of your type of glass, because of the concerns you had, because of the longevity and durability and so on. Those, that is how you stay at your price. You offer other options, okay? And you don't uh, find yourself chipping away at your price. That is how you get a higher price than the competitor. You have to be willing to put that price out there and you have to be able to explain and educate the customer as to why the quality of the film and the whole service all around is worth that and customers will pay for it. You have to do it, do it over and over and over and you'll see that as a whole, you're gonna make more money, you're gonna get more customers, you're gonna get more happy customers and things become more pleasant. Um, but at first, it can be scary. Um, you know, pricing people high than higher than maybe you're used to. Um, but you know, that's where also your manufacturer can come in and they can assist you with sales techniques and so on. Or you can leave a comment here and I would love to assist you and focus on specific sales techniques and nitty gritty issues that you um, identify with your own business or you're wondering. Those are also things that we can ask um, some of our guests. So this Thursday's guest, like I said, uh, Thursdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, same time, same place. We're gonna be doing a guest version of Tint Whiz. That's every Thursday. The next three weeks are booked out. Um, if you want to be a guest, or if there's somebody that you think would make a great guest, please tag them below or message me or message them to message me or message me to message them or whatever you wanna do, and we'll get them on. And that'll be a great opportunity to get a diverse, um, you know, a diverse aspect and uh, group of you know, best practices and so on, on a wider range of topics from a wide a range of experience. Because, you know, uh, we're all in the same industry, and but everybody has a different experience. They might work for the same company. They might be the same position in a company. You might, they might own a tin shop. You may have a bigger one. They might have a bigger one, but everybody has their perspective. And I think, I know everybody can benefit from hearing everybody's piece to their puzzle. So Thursdays. So that's going to be pricing higher than the competitor. And then the fourth thing on this list, now uh, jumping around again, but the last thing to discuss would be keeping cheap clients happy. So keeping cheap clients happy, you know, it's, you can't get frustrated with cheap clients. Like I said, whenever you have a cheap client, you have to go into it assuming that you haven't done a good enough job explaining to them why um, or educating them on the differences. Now, in, in the films and so on. Now, with that said, at the end of the day, there are always going to be cheap customers. It might not be, it's not a thing about their personality. Um, it's not a negative trait or characteristic in them. Sometimes it's a cheap situation. Like, I'll give you a cheap situation. Um, maybe somebody wants to cover their uh, storefront with whiteout when um, they're doing construction inside uh, you know, doing the build out. Well, it might only be on there for three weeks or a month or two months. That's a cheap situation. They're not concerned about durability. They're not concerned about anything. They just want something that's going to look a little bit better than brown paper. I'll give you an example there. You can either use temporary remote, like temporary whiteout, super cheap whiteout, because hey, it doesn't matter how long it lasts and it'll pull right off. Or you can even try to up some and say, hey, look, we can do the whiteout at the price that you're looking to be at. However, for a couple dollars more, we can print your graphic and coming soon on some of those whiteout panels. Would you like that? It's going to cost a little more. And, you know, you then open yourself up to a, um, 
an additional markup, or you can just simply say, hey, what about this? I'll do the whiteout for you and I'll do the graphics for free. Do you have somebody doing your window graphics currently for the actual build out of the business? And doing a graphic on their coming soon might lead to you doing the graphics on the inside, you might tinting for heat, maybe it's a storefront and they're gonna do, they're gonna have products and you can say, hey, what, what, what are you putting in front of these windows? Oh, is it gonna be clothing? Do you want to put a window film to protect that clothing from fading and block the infrared to protect those fabrics and so on? So those are all you know, opportunities. A cheap client may be a builder that's gonna have tons of opportunities. And um, you know, so don't, don't build up those calluses um, with cheap clients or any client. Try to go into it as optimistically as possible and um, treat everybody equally. Try to see where you can benefit, where they can benefit from a relationship with you, where you can benefit from a relationship with them. You really don't know where those roads go and you never want to burn bridges um, just by being, you know, like dismissive or kind of like rude or thinking it's not worth your time and so on. I promise you that is, that's like the difference between like you adding a little weight to your ankle every day um, or you, you know, adding feathers or something to you that makes you move faster and uh, more gracefully in business. I don't know if feathers will do that, but my point is like, I just feel like in business, a bad review, a bad interaction, a burned bridge, anything less than a positive, great result is like adding a little weight to your ankle. And what happens is you start to build those up over and over and you end up building a callus on your leg and you build a lot of extra weight to drag around with you that makes you not as efficient and effective in business. So, um, you know, analyze yourself. That is flat glass domination. Um, let's hang out here for just a couple more seconds and see if there's any questions or anything I should, uh, you know, I should touch on before we uh, cut this live stream. And uh, while I wait on any of those comments, it is, uh, we're about what? We're about 49 minutes away from Patrick going live on the Window Tint Business YouTube page. Window Tint Business, he also has a Facebook group. He's not a sponsor, a promoter. He is just one, uh, he is one of the absolute greats in this industry, someone that I look up to, someone that was an enormous and is an enormous inspiration for me. And that's why I keep mentioning him over and over. Um, I will be watching his live stream in for 48 minutes from now. Um, and I suggest you do too. So you take a little break after this thing, maybe grab a coffee, um, do some jumping jacks, whatever it is, and then get ready for his live stream. That's the Window Tint Business on YouTube. And then this Thursday, Facebook, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Central, same time as the Tuesday Tint Wisdoms. We're going to be doing a Tint Wisdom, um, Tint Wisdom, Tint Wisdom uh, interview style show. So that's Thursday, same place, same time, different Dre, and every week we'll have a different guest, and I'm super, super excited about that. So hope to see you guys on Thursday. Timmy, thank you. Um, thank you so much for the uh, positive words. Thank you for watching. And uh, great, Vinny, thank you as well. I definitely appreciate you saying that, and um, you know, I really, uh, really appreciate you guys watching. Vinny also said, my business is word of mouth, so being positive and truthful is, a, is my biggest asset. And, you know, it should be your biggest asset. Um, whether most of your business comes from word of mouth or not, that is absolutely like, if you're getting word of mouth, you know you are doing, your service is being done correctly. You know you're doing a great job. You must be treating your customers well, and you must be doing a great service for them. So at that point, you can jump to that first step we mentioned today for domination, which is reach more clients because uh, word of mouth, word of mouth is the ultimate sign that people love your business. So if people love your business, if you wanna grow it, the next step is speed it up. So, um, so yeah. Vinny, good job. Because if if biggest if your biggest asset is word of mouth, then you can pat yourself on the back and know that you are making your customers super happy. Um, not just meeting their expectations, but obviously exceeding them if they're going um, out of their way to recommend you to their friends and family. So awesome. You know, because if you get a burger and that burger is so-so, it met the needs and so on, you're not going out there and telling everybody they got to try the burger. If you're telling people to try the burger, the burger must have blown you away and you want to be the burger of the of the tint industry in your area. So, so yeah, you know it's on my mind. 
And uh, Justin, hey, thanks for joining. And uh, there's never too late. Watch it from the beginning. I'll also be updating, uploading this to our YouTube channel. You can find it anytime on our Facebook channel. If you're watching this pre-recorded or if you're going to start it over now because you jumped in late, please, please, please feel free to leave comments. I definitely read all the comments and um, I will respond, I promise. So thank you all for watching and um, we will see you Thursday. This Thursday, same place, same time, Thursday instead of Tuesday. And it'll be me and a guest. So uh, see you then. Bye.